Hello and welcome to our notes on common and natural logs. So today we're going to ta talk about some specific types of logs. We've learned about what a log is and how to use it. So common and natural logs are logs that have a specific number as the base. So for example, a common log is any log with base 10. And what we do here is essentially um, if you see a uh, a question where it just says log of a number that's common log and that means you're allowed to assume that the base is 10 so for example log 100 is 2 because 10 to the second power is 100 so the thing we get to do here with that uh, common logs is uh, we can use them to solve log questions that don't normally allow us to solve, or sorry, we can solve exponential questions that normally might stump us. So, for example, if both sides of an equation cannot be written easily as powers of the same base, you can solve by taking the log of each side. So, what happened to my space? 3x, 3 the x equals 11. So normally when we have questions like this, we would be able to write it as 3 to the x equals 3 to the something power. But 3 squared is 9, and 3 to the third is 27. So we can't rewrite 11 as a power of 3. So what we can do is we can take the log of both sides and then use some of our log properties to solve this. So if we have an exponent here, we can pull it out to the side. So this means x times log 3 equals log 11. And then after we do this, we can solve by doing normal solving stuff. So we know how to get x by itself is to divide both sides by log 3. And when we're doing questions like this, we can actually just leave it as is because this is not going to work out as a nice number. So we can just say x equals log 11 divided by log 3. Let's take a look at that again. So once again, we have 4 to the x. 15 can't be written in terms of an exponent of 4. So we would do log of 4 to the x equals log of 15. And the reason we can do this is because any time we make a change to an equation, as long as we make the same change to both sides, it's still balanced. So we took the log of both sides. We did the same thing to both sides. That turns into x times log 4 equals log 15, and then we can divide both sides by the log of 4. So that gives us x equals log 15 divided by log 4. All right, next one. All right, so this one's just like the first two, so why don't you give this one a try? Let me know what you get. All right, so for this one, it just ends up becoming x equals log 42 times log 5. So example D becomes a little more challenging. So let's take a look at what we're going to do here. Um, it's not going to be too awfully hard. It's just going to take some a little more thought. So let's go through this one. So once again, 5 and 8 can't be turned into the same type of base. So we're still going to start the same way. We're going to take the log of both sides. So log of 5 to the 3y equals log 8 to the y minus 1. So what we get to do here is we're going to still bring down our exponent because we can do that. So it's going to become 3y times log 5. 
And then this is going to be y minus 1 times log 8. Now, when we're solving, we want to get y on the same side or whatever variable we're using. So in order to do that, we're going to first do the other thing that we know to do when we're solving equations. We're going to distribute this log. So it's going to become y times log 8 minus 1 times log 8 is just log 8. So 3y times log 5 is equal to y log 8 minus log 8. So now that we have that, to get the y to the left with the other y, we're going to subtract. So we're going to subtract y log 8 from both sides. And that's going to give us 3y log 5 minus y log 8 equals negative log 8. Now, what this allows us to do is we want to be able to isolate our variable, the y. You'll notice we have two terms in here, and they both have a y involved. That means we can factor. So we can factor out y from this, and that'll leave us with y times 3 log 5 minus log 8 equals negative 1 log 8. And now that we have this, the y is by itself, so to speak, with the exception of the fact that it's being multiplied by these parentheses here. And all we have to do is divide both sides by what's in that parentheses. So 3 log 5 minus log 8. Divide this side by 3 log 5 minus log 8. So y equals, and I'm just going to leave that up there instead of rewriting that whole thing again. So once, So all we did is we just manipulated it to get that y by itself. We used a bunch of different factoring exponent log rules to make that happen. So it's just about moving things around to suit your needs. So let's see that one more time, and then I'll have you guys try this last one. So we have 3 to the 2x equals 6x x plus 1. I'm going to start by taking log of 3 to the 2x equals log 6x plus 1. So that gives us 2x log 3 equals x plus 1 log 6. Then we're going to distribute the log. So we have 2x log 3 equals x log 6 plus log 6. Then we're going to get the x's to one side, so we're going to subtract x log 6 from both sides. It's going to bring us up here. So we have 2x log 3 minus x log 6. So once again, we have oops, equals log 6. We have an x in both of these terms, so we can factor out that x, which leaves us 2 log 3 minus log 6 equals log 6. And then to get x alone, we can just divide by that parentheses. Oops, I forgot the 3. So 2 log 3 minus log 
6. So this is our answer here. So x equals log 6 divided by 2 log 3 minus log 6. Now, if you are in a situation where they ask you for the numbers, these are all numbers. You can plug these in and figure this out. But for the sake of like preventing us from needing to round or anything, I'm just leaving it written like this. So let's go to our last one. So why don't you guys give this a try? So you're going to write your answer out like this. Um, and what you can do is you can put the first log in parentheses and then division and then put the bottom part in parentheses as well uh, when you type it in. So go ahead and try example F and let me know what you get. All right. so. I have the work here. It, it goes down. It starts to go diagonal. Uh, but what you should get at the end is log 5 divided by log 4 minus 2 log 5. All right. So let's take a look at our next piece of information for this lesson. And this is called the change of base. So there might be a situation where it might be easier to do your log if that base was different. So maybe you can actually find the base or a log of something with a different number. So what you can do is I have an example here using base 10. So natural log or not natural log, uh, common log. But you can do this with any base. So what you can do is if we have log base a of b, you can change the base if you take the log of the b, so whatever you're taking log of already, and divide it by that same kind of log. So see how I wrote the 10 here? You can use a different number, but we're essentially for today, we're going to be doing this with common log and then maybe natural log when we get there. And then in the dot the denominator, you're going to do the same type of log of your original base. So numerator, denominator, new log base. So let's take a look at that. So complete a change of base. So I have three examples here, so I'm going to do two and then I'll have you try this last one. So log 4 of 25. So we can do a change of base here if we just do log, we'll do 10, which is the natural log. So I'm actually just going to say log. Log of 25, the big number, over your old base, log 4. And that's it. So once again, log, big number, 18 over log of the old base. All right, your turn. Go ahead. Complete the change of base for log 7 of 5. Change it to a common log. Okay, so you should have log 5 over log 7. Okay, so next we're going to talk about natural log and the variable e. So e is called Euler's number, uh, named after a uh, mathematician Euler. And it's a number that pops up often enough in log situations and math in general that much like pi, they gave it a specific variable. So, and it also, um, e, Euler's number, doesn't end 
like pi does. It doesn't end or repeat. It has no pattern. So we don't know how far the number keeps going or what pattern it is, but we they have like certain numbers out that they have figured it out. So I'm just going to give you guys um, a short list of that number. All right. So um, 2.718281828456. And then it just keeps going in no pattern that we know of. Um, and this is called Euler's number. Uh, it's spelled like Euler's, but the name is pronounced Euler's. And a natural log is a log with base E. So So if we wrote log E of a number, that's called a natural log, and it is written as ln instead of writing log base E. So if we write ln, we're doing a natural log. And you can use natural log uh, for change of base like we did. You can also use the natural log the same way we did with common log. Um, especially if you're just using it to manipulate and do uh, certain like divisions and whatnot. So uh, what we're also going to write here is some equivalent expressions related to uh, natural log. So if we are given a question that has e to an exponent equals a number, we can take the natural log of that number and set it equal to x. So we can manipulate it that way. Um, or vice versa, if we have the natural log of x equals a number, we can say e to that number equals x. And this is a way for us to isolate our variable in a sense so that we have an easier way to work with our question. So let's start by doing um, some practice with Euler's number and natural log. So we're just going to use our calculator to get these four decimal places. Um, so on, if you use Desmos, um, if you use Desmos under function, you have natural log and e. This e here is the the Euler's number e. So you can use those. Um, they also even have a default to do e to the x if you need to do e to an exponent. Uh, if you have a Texas Instrument calculator, um, you have the log and natural log buttons um, right on the left-hand side. And you'll also notice uh, they're kind of like opposite, the thing that goes with them. Uh, the second button for log, common log, which is base 10, gives you 10 to an exponent. The second key for natural log gives you e to an exponent. So if you need to use those for anything. Um, and then let's see. if you just need e by itself, then you would just use that um, second e to the x and then just not give it an exponent. Oh, wait, no, here it is. Sorry, sorry. Second division is where the E by itself is. All right, so we're just going to do some, just like showing, like using the E in our calculator. So if you do E squared, E squared gives us about 7.5. 3891. You plug in e to the negative 1.3, that gives us about 0 0.2725. If we do e to the 1 half, which you might know that fraction exponents are like roots, so this would be the same as doing the square root of e. This gives us about 
Now we also have some practice taking natural logs. So this is what we're finding out e to the what power is 4. So the natural log of 4 is about 1.3863. The natural log of 0 0.05, so we're getting a decimal, so that means we're taking like um, an inverse, is negative 2.9957. The natural log of 7 is 1.9459. So we're just plugging this in to our calculator. So that's all that happened is I just plugged in e to the 1 half. I just typed in natural log using the ln key and then putting in 4. So next we're going to practice writing an equivalent expression. For the equation given. So you'll see here they gave us an x in the exponent here. They gave us an x in the natural log. So we want to write this as x equals and x equals here using the equivalent expressions. So let's find the one where we have x in the exponent of e. So that's this first one. e to the x equal to a number is the same thing as writing natural log of that number equals x. So this is natural log of 5 is equal to x. So the other one, natural log of a number, nope, sorry, natural log of x equals a number. So we want to find the x equals version. So that's this one here. Natural log of x equals a number is equal to e to that exponent equals x. So e, I'll just use the same color this time, e to the 0 0.6931 is equal to x. And the reason we do this is because you'll notice we just wrote this as natural log equals x. So if we wanted to find an answer, we just do natural log of 5 and that give us a number. If we wanted to find an answer for this. We would raise e to this power and that give us an answer. Um, and the reason we can do this is we can use this to do some manipulation and get equivalent expressions. So we're given e to the 4x equals 120. So we're going to rewrite this using natural log. So e to the 4x. So natural log, we're kind of doing the loop again uh, from our original log question. So natural log of 120 equals 4x. And then we can solve for x by doing one more step. We can divide by 4. And then we can actually just leave it as this. So x equals natural log of 120 over 4. All right? And then some of these are a little harder than others, but same idea. So natural log of the number on the other side. So ln of 21 is equal to the exponent. So x minus 2. This one's a lot more straight. This one's also one step done. We're going to add 2 to both sides. The natural log of 21 plus 2. equals x. And that's it. Now we go into some other ones. So ln of 6x, I should have put parentheses around these, equals 4. So this one, 
we're going to want to turn it into an e expression. So what we do here is we're going to say e to the number over there. So this is going to be e to the fourth power equals whatever was in the natural log. So 6x. So to solve this, well, once again, we'll divide both sides by 6. And then this just gives us e to the fourth power over 6 equals x. Example u has a slightly, has an additional piece of information for us because we have two natural logs. So do you remember what we can do? What do we know about adding logs? This works for natural logs and common logs as well. So if we're adding logs, that means the inside terms can be multiplied together and turn into one log. So this can become natural log of 5x times 3x equals 9, which means natural log of 15x squared equals 9. And then now we can break it up. So we're going to have e to the ninth power equals 15x squared. Divide both sides by 15. e to the ninth power over 15 equals x squared. And then we'll take the square root of both sides. So square root. There's not a lot of like cleaning and simplifying for these unless you have something that like works out really well. Um, so we have the square root of e to the ninth over 15. We're just going to leave it as the fraction equals x. All right. And then this last one here, this last one's actually a lot easier than you might think. So to do these, you usually want to have the e by itself. So sometimes they might have you do some more simplification to finish things off before you can do natural log or move things around. So first, because this is 2 times e, we're going to divide both sides by 2. That's going to give us e to the 3x plus 5 equals 1. And this actually makes this question a lot easier than you would think. And this is why this question is here, to just kind of remind you about these rules. What do we raise any term to? What power do we raise something to to give us 1? Anything to the 0 power is 1. So that means whatever 3x plus 5 is, it's got to be 0. Otherwise, that's 1. So e to the 0 equals 1. That means 3x plus 5 equals 0. And then for this one, we can just solve like we would just solve for x. So we would get 3x equals negative 5. Divide both sides by 3. And that gives us x equals negative 5 thirds. That's it for this common and natural log lesson. If you have any questions, go ahead and put them in at the end of this video.